Hi, this is Caroline, and I'm with Echolocity, where we want to help you find your flow, whether it's in work management tools and software, or by helping you find a solution that works best for you and your organization. Today, I'm going to be focusing on Microsoft Planner. I have been working in Planner a lot this year. I've been very excited about it. The new Planner started rolling out late last year, and we're coming up on about a year since it was rolled out, but there have been so many things that have been added to it, continue to be improved from the Microsoft side. They've taken a lot of feedback, and they also have a roadmap for longer term things that are gonna be incorporated in the new Planner. One question I do get a lot, though, that I wanted to highlight is basic versus premium plans within an organization. So let me, get the view of planner up for us and take a look here at planner itself within teams i may be at an organization where there's a mix that some people only have access to basic plans in planner and some people are using premium plans what does that look like within an organization when you've got both the big question for a lot of people is you know we know that premium's great we don't necessarily need everyone on it though because it is uh, some additional licensing What's the experience like for a basic user accessing a premium plan? So let's take a look at that for today. Just as a reminder, I'm looking here at my planner in Teams as a basic user. So I'm gonna see all the capabilities that I'm used to, my, my day, my task, my plans. I, I went into detail on these views in some previous videos if you wanna check them out. And now I'm looking at an example of just a basic plan. Just as a reminder what this even looks like, you've got a standard set of columns for a basic plan, all the, all the key information you're gonna need, but there's some limitations on what you can do. You can't reorder these columns, you can't move them around, you can't add any new columns, although you do have some flexibility with adding things like labels, that you can adjust different labels, add those to a task to make it as useful as possible for your folks. When you open up the actual task view here, you can see all of these fields and you can also see some things like for progress, you've got three choices. You, you have a standard set of things. For priority, you have four choices. You've got a standard set of things. And this is something you don't have the ability as a basic user to change. You can use this out of the box version of things. You also can add notes and descriptions. You can add checklist items to, if you want to be tracking progress as you go through. And then you'll start seeing this countdown of how many of the checklist items within a, a task have you done. You can add attachments and you can leave comments. One thing to note here about comments, those are these are very straight, simple comments. You cannot at somebody and, and tag them. You, you can't do a comment that you know tells and gives someone a notification that they're receiving a comment. You can just do these simple comments like I've already done down here and see the history of those comments. And that will update right away. You've also got these other views. I'm looking now at the, the grid view and I've chosen add buckets, which is something else you can adjust from a uh, plan as a basic user. I've added buckets that are essentially around phases because I found that useful. If I wanted to add an additional bucket, I could add that here. So there's a little bit of customization here to even for a basic user on a basic plan. There is a calendar type view, but you really have to work on the dates within your task to make that a useful view. And I'm looking at this on a smaller screen, so it's, it's not going to be as useful. But if I look at the zoomed in week view, I can see how things are scheduled and they're colored by the progress. I can see this design review is partially finished. This UAT training is not due till November, so it's still just showing us gray. And then finally, I do have a chart view and again these are just out of the box these aren't really things that you can adjust but you can see some simple a status chart how many tasks are there of certain priority levels and those buckets including the custom bucket I created here which doesn't have anything in it as well as team members that tasks are assigned to now this is great for me, you know, basic user. I can do what I want to do. I can assign tasks. And one really crucial thing is that when I have a task assigned here, this is my demo basic plan, it's going to show up in my roll up of my tasks. So now when I start my day or my tasks, I want to look at everything I've got assigned to me. Here's all the things that have been added for me into 
my task. In fact, I'll add one now. This one actually isn't showing up because it's already complete. Let me just add another one to myself so we can see it pop up in the my task view. UAT session one here now, demo basic plan. That is showing up right away after I added it to that plan. Now it's rolling up into my task. But what about the case where I do have another team or another project manager using a premium plan and they want to assign me some tasks in that plan, but I'm just a basic user. The great thing is, even as a basic user, you can still, for one, see that plan. The example I'll do here is a content tracker and a, a couple of premium plans here, Kickstart implementation content tracker. Those are both showing up in my plans because I have something assigned to me in them. If I look at this actual plan, which I can immediately see is a premium plan, I can see it in the quote premium view. I can see it with these features that we like from premium plans like task hierarchy, where I've got a parent row, you can add, add the child tasks, I can see the roll-ups here, you know, as I, if I complete a child task, I can see the roll-up that updates at the parent level for percent complete, similar on the parent-child date capability, if I change the date of a child task, it's now June 29th, it's going to update the due date or the finish date overall for the, the parent task to reflect the latest date. I also, if I scroll to the right, can see some additional columns that were added to this premium plan. Some of these are out of the box premium columns. If you click on this add column, these, this list of columns that it gives you are premium columns that can be added. And as a basic user, I can add them. I can add the start date. Like I would like to see the start date of this you know, of this particular task. I can add a premium column and I can even rearrange it. I would like to see this start date over by, if I can get it to go, just a sec. There we go. I'm gonna move it on over here by my finish date, because I find that useful. So basic user, it's actually telling me up here, I didn't point that out, but because I'm a basic user, it's gonna give me this message about basic access. I can add premium columns and I can rearrange them. The thing I cannot do is create any kind of custom column. When I click on add column, the only choices I get are these, this set of columns that are considered premium. I've got a better example on this other plan where there's actually several custom columns that were added by someone with a premium license. So this is like a, a content tracker, for like a marketing department and they wanted to add some custom columns to show the type of content. So they created a column, called it content type, they created one called reference URL, they created a primary channel column. As a basic user, I can hide that column if I don't want to see it, but I cannot add a custom column of my own. I also can add it back, which is essentially unhiding it. That's a custom column that someone else created, this primary channel. So I can see it, I can hide it, I can unhide it, but I can't actually create any additional custom columns. The other limitation you'll notice pretty quickly if you're interacting as a basic user with premium plans, when you click into the actual task details, you can only edit some of these fields you can edit the standard fields, kind of the ones you're used to from the basic plan. I can, I can add another assignee to the task or change the assignee. I can add a label. I can do a custom label the same way that I could on basic plans. Um, I can add just a general note. I can adjust the dates. All of these that are in white, I, I can edit as a basic user, and I can add a checklist. However, when I get down to these premium columns and these custom columns, I don't have the ability to edit these. I can't update this custom column of effort completed remaining or total. I can't update these custom fields. Someone else who created this plan and is maintaining it is the one who is able to click into and edit these custom fields. I cannot add a dependency. This is grayed out. If I was a premium user, I would be able to just click on this. It, it would not be grayed out. I, I can open an attachment add an attachment, I can even edit or remove an attachment, still as a basic user. 
And then something that I cannot do in a basic plan, but is a really great capability, is I can actually open a channel conversation about this task. And it's going to tie directly to this task, not just the plan, but the specific task. So I can click on open in channel. It's going to take me to the team channel that this particular plan is associated with, that team group. So it's sort of switched over to this team, my, my Microsoft practice. I still have my task open here. And now I've got this button that says task conversation. When I click on that, I'll actually get a conversation related to this task. If, if there's already a conversation, you can access it and you know put in another comment and see the history of the task conversation. I'll put it here. I can tag someone like my colleague and send. And now this is actually, I, I can see it here from the task view, but if I come back out to this channel within this Microsoft team, here's this whole conversation related directly to this task. Um, so that's a really exciting capability that even as a basic user I can do. I can start a channel post conversation about a specific task or I can update one that's already going. So coming back to the planner app in Teams, just a reminder that anyone in your organization really has basic access to planner as long as they have access to Teams. They can come in Teams, they can do the plus sign to add an app to get this planner app, and they will get the same view, be able to see my day, my tasks, my plans, they'll be able to pin plans, they'll be able to do these other basic capability things we looked at, as well as these things on any premium plans that they have tasks assigned to them. They also can create new plans, but they'll see a view like this where they only have the option to add a basic plan. Premium licensing is going to get some different options for adding premium plans, and I'll probably do another more detailed video on that in the future because that is a piece that has been changing a little bit as new features have been rolled out. But coming back to my slide, just a quick overview. What can basic users do in premium plans in Microsoft Planner in Teams? They can view the task hierarchy and predecessors, which is another way of saying they can view a premium plan in its full structure, the, uh, as we saw. They can view premium columns and custom columns that have been created by premium users. They can rearrange those columns, they can hide and unhide them, as we saw. And perhaps most significantly, they can start and respond to channel posts on a specific task. This is the place where Planner is really tied into Teams in a nice way, that you can have a channel post with a link directly to a specific task, not just the plan, but a specific task. And that's something that even basic users can do in a premium plan. The takeaway really is that not everyone needs the highest licensing or even higher licensing. Even those with basic access, those who have access to Teams, will be able to see plans in Planner, both basic and premium. They'll be able to update key fields and they'll be able to respond to channel posts on specific tasks. We're very excited about this capability and I wanted to make it a little more clear for those organizations, which is probably a lot of you, that are gonna have both basic users and premium users within Microsoft Planner. Stay tuned, watch this space, because there are even more updates and features we expect to see rolled out in the next month, probably even in the next six months, according to the Microsoft Roadmap, so we'll make some more videos. Throw any questions or comments you have in, in the comments on YouTube, anything else you'd like to see, and it was great to talk to you. Thanks.